and open the waiting room. Good luck, everyone. Thanks for being a part of this again. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Palmish County Library System, a little corner of the internet here. This is another virtual event. If you were, were intending to be at Read, Watch, Listen, Black History Month edition, you found us as planned. Uh, we're expecting a, quite a few more people on, so don't be surprised if we have people joining us throughout the hour, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, we are recording today's activity just for the benefit of everyone who couldn't be here for the live stream. Um, the way Read, Watch, Listen works, if you're unfamiliar, uh, it's a hour spent among library staff recommending some of their favorite books, music, television, movies, all sourced from people who work here who are excited to share things. And of course, things that are available with your library card. Uh, you'll probably be introduced to a few electronic services such as Cloud Library and Hoopla and Freegal today. These are just some things in addition to the physical items on our shelf that you are granted with your library card. Um, today's edition here is a special one. We are recognizing and celebrating Black History Month throughout the library system all of February. So today we gathered uh, a bunch of my colleagues from around the system to highlight not only black creators in the fields of literature, film, television, and music, but also materials focusing on black culture, history, or just characters in the works as well. Once again, I'm Chris Janko. I'm joined by Michelle Corrales. Live on the call today, we have an awesome mix of uh, my friends and colleagues from around the system. We've got Maribel de Jesus from our main library. We've got Tawana Kohler from Green Acres. We've got Brianna Vasquez, also from Gear Anchors. We've got Kaylin from Bell Glade. And uh, I'm, the way I'm going to start this off today is actually sharing a few recommendations that were provided from uh, around the system for people who weren't able to join us live on the call, but just wanted to share some materials uh, from a distance. So let's start the show, Michelle. And uh, this first pick is from Sorrel Mitchell at our Wellington branch. Uh, it's a shot in the moonlight, how a freed slave and Confederate soldier fought for justice in the Jim Crow South. It's by Ben Montgomery. And Sorrel was kind enough to provide me with a little bit of a description uh, on her behalf here. I'm gonna go ahead and share that. She says, while I don't believe George Dinning's story had a truly happy ending, I was pleasantly surprised that it did not end like most from the Jim Crow South. The story picked up quickly from the start. It had me cheering for this man's bravery and being in awe at the help he received along the way by some very unlikely people. I was glad to see some justice was possible for a black man in that era. This book should be essential reading. We need to know these stories from our nation's past, even if they aren't always pretty. Well, thanks, Sorrell, for providing that recommendation. Sounds like a very engaging read, uh, something that I would enjoy for sure. And moving on, uh, we got another recommendation from a pretty far other side of the spectrum, which is great from that first one. Uh, this is from Aiden Sipper Mar Skipper Martinez. Uh, he's from our main library. And this is a graphic novel, as you can see. It's called Snapdragon by Cat Lee. It's a graphic novel. Uh, about a girl named Snapdragon. And according to Aiden, one day she meets the neighborhood, I'm gonna put air quotes, which Jax, who teaches her about taking care of animals, taxidermy, and honoring animals' souls. Through fate, Snapdragon discovers that Jax had a relationship with her grandmother years ago. With a mix of racial diversity, LGBT inclusion, and the supernatural, this graphic novel is an amazing read. Additionally, the art st style is enjoyable. Uh, thank you to Aiden for that one. And another round from, of recommendations for someone who wasn't able to join us today, but uh, provided some really cool uh, things here for us to think about and, and consider taking home and reading, watching and listening as well. We've got Afra Burton from Glades Road. 
thanks to Afra. This first one is uh, a children's book. It's called Georgia's Terrific Colorific Experiment. It's by Zoe Persico. And Afra says, uh, the illustrations in this book depict a young black girl who aspires to become a scientist and her family of artists. The imagery is beautiful and colorful, and the story is all about inspiration and family. This book was chosen because it's a great example of representation for children of color. They can see themselves in the story with the use of captivating illustrations. And the next one from Afra is also a children's book. This one's called Honey Smoke. It's by Monique Fields. And Afra shared that a young girl looks around her world to find her place in it. Her skin color is not like anyone else's. So what is her color? She finally chooses her own and creates a new word, honey smoke. This book is an important representation of biracial children or anyone looking to embrace their true identity. The author Monique Fields has two biracial daughters who inspired her to write the story. Yesenia Moises, the, uh, the illustrator, is Afro-Latina and has written and illustrated other books such as Stella's Stella Hair. And Afra's next recommendation that she provided to us is not a children's book. This is more of a, of a memoir type, type book that sounds really cool. Um, it's from Shonda Rhimes, it's called Year of Yes. Shonda Rhimes is a fairly well-known entertainment or entertainer, I guess you could say. Uh, and here is what Afra provided us in the description here. With three hit shows on television and three children's at home, Shonda Rhimes has had lots of good reasons to say no when an un unexpected invitation arrives. Hollywood party? No. Speaking engagement? No. Media appearances? No. And there was a side benefit of saying no for an introvert like Shonda. Nothing new to fear. Then Shonda's sister laid down a challenge. Just for one year, try to say yes to the unexpected invitations that come your way. Shonda reluctantly agreed and the result was nothing short of transformative. In year of yes, Shonda Rhimes chronicles the powerful impact saying yes had on every aspect of her life and how we can all change our lives with one little word, yes. Sounds like an inspiring story. And Afra's final uh, recommendation is a film. It's available not only on a DVD at a branch, but if you are familiar with Hoopla, uh, that is a streaming service that is available through our library. Um, you can also watch it on there. Uh, probably hear me say this more than once today, but if, if, if you're unfamiliar with any of the electronic resources that we go over today, someone at one of our branches is more than happy to walk you through how to get that onto your device and to begin uh, enjoying a lot of these items that um, you just put directly onto your uh, phone, your tablet uh, in electronic version. Uh, Hoopla has a pretty cool selection of, of films for sure. So this one's called I Am Not a Witch. Uh, Afra says this movie is written and directed by Rungano Nioni. He's a Zambian Welsh director. The film is set in a remote Zambian village where a young girl is declared a witch and sent to a witch camp. Its dramatic tone provides a peek into rural Africa where superstition is perfectly normal. A mix of English and African languages such as Bemba are used throughout the movie. And Afra says it's definitely a film worth watching. Uh, I was just talking the other day about how I want to watch this pretty bad. So I'm going to be watching it too. Uh, that does conclude everything that's been recommended by people who are not joining us live on the call today. Uh, you will get a well-deserved break from hearing me talk. Um, up next, we are going to move on to Brianna Vasquez. She's from our Green Acres branch, as I said, and this first book is called Legend Born. Tell us more about it. Okay, um, so this book got pretty popular like on TikTok like early 2020. And I just want to say that like I think it's pretty much worth the hype. But it's a reimagining of the legend of Arthur. And it follows 16 year old Bree Matthews, who's on the cover there. And as she starts taking classes at a college nearby, um, that's like a old historical college and it's like deeply rooted in racism mm -hmm. in that area and um pretty quickly she discovers that there's like a secret society 
in the college. And she thinks that they might be responsible for the death of her mother. So she decides to go undercover and join them. And she makes a lot of like discoveries and stuff like that while she's there. And it's really cool because it's like, if you love world building, there's a lot of that in the story. And I think there's like a really cool, like the way everything's set up and all the magic and stuff like that. It's really, really like all the creatures. I just love it. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks for that one. And for your watch, you have Do the Right Thing, which is a awesome movie i feel like i watched end up watching this like once every other year at this point in my life <laughs> i had to uh, this for, for school <laughs> yeah yeah i watched it and like they played it i took like a film class i think it's like one of the first things they showed us was this movie so um it was like my introduction to spike lee so like i really really like love him as a director and like as a creator I think he does like things really well and um yeah I just like how he just tackles like the topic of like racism mm -hmm. so for this one it's like a community in well this is Brooklyn so like it's in New York and I just felt like my family's from up north so it felt like very familiar and um, it's about like the different like tensions between like like the communities of like black people, Hispanic people, and like the white families and stuff like that. And it like slowly builds throughout the movie. And it's just like I think he does it so well because like at first you think it's just like a a really chill movie, and then it gets really dark and serious very mm -hmm. fast. Yeah, it's definitely tense, and it's all, it's basically all in, like, one really hot summer day, right? Like, yeah, uh, it's lots day. of fire, <laughs> fire hydrants going off and stuff, I remember, yeah. Yeah. Tension's a good word, <laughs> for sure. It gets, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's powerful. Uh, cool. Uh, next from Brianna, we have a book that I know, I think you enjoy listening to this one, but we do have a physical copy. This one's called Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. It's this one all about um honey girl follows the main character um grace porter and she's 28 years old and she recently got her phd in like astronomy so she lives her life very planned and by the book and um after she gets her her phd her friends drive her to las vegas to go celebrate and she ends up waking up married to a woman and she doesn't remember who she is <laughs> so it's just like she she's just like kind of thrown a, a wrench out of nowhere and she doesn't know how to handle it mm -hmm. and um when she goes home she decides to find this woman and she figures out that like maybe her life isn't she doesn't know what to do it's kind of like it's marketed as a romance but she, it's also very reliant on just like, just figuring yourself out and just like how to be kind to yourself if you over, you know, work yourself. So I feel like it's a very therapeutic type of like slow read and it's about like self-love as well as like a romance. Sounds like it, sounds like pretty good yeah. book that I would not have ever heard of until, <laughs> which is like a lot of books that Brianna brings to the program. <laughs> so I would appreciate these. Thanks, Brianna. Yeah, welcome. On to Tawanda Kohler, also from our Green Acres branch. <laughs> welcome, Hi. Tawanda. This is your first time on the it's show. My first time. So <laughs> you're with me. Um, Secret Life of Bees is about a young 14-year-old um, girl. Um, coming into herself. Um, she's raised by just her father, who is not very understanding, just really not a nice person at all. And she's yearning for that mother figure that she's missing because she lost her mom when she was about four um, due to a gun incident, but has never been able to find really any real answers about what happened. 
So she keeps these treasures of her mom and she has one that shows a um, photograph of a black Virgin Mary. And it has a, a town named Tuburban, South Carolina. And this is also based in South Carolina of 1964. So with the help of her caregiver, Rosaline, who is a um, African-American um, caregiver and um, housekeeper at her home. And she sets out to find out what has happened to her mother or about her mom's secrets by finding this town to Bourbon in South Carolina. And on her journey, you know, she learns a lot of things because she runs into um, these three beekeepers, which are sisters, African-American sisters. And they kind of teach her about love and finding herself, which tends to be, you know, a nice journey for her. And she does find some answers, but not all the answers. I don't want to give it all away, but <laughs> they did a movie from this one too, which has some um, pretty popular actors, actresses in there, Alicia Keys, um, Queen Latifah, um, her sisters in there, and Jennifer Hudson is the um, housekeeper. So it's a pretty cool. interesting movie. And also since it deals in 1964, it talks about Rosaline's journey to um, first time voting mm. as an African-American woman. It doesn't go so well because she gets an argument with a couple of um, very prejudiced men in the town and she's beaten and arrested. And um, actually the young girl, Lily, kind of sneaks her out of jail and that's when they head on their journey. So I thought it was pretty good. Very cool. Yeah, I never yeah. never read that one. We yeah. do have it in our book club and a bag collection too, I think, if anyone yes, out there wants to start a book club around this book. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. And I picked out this uh, film as well for The Watch. Uh, we have it on DVD here. It's called Rosewood. It's about a true story, right? Yes. Actually, it's this town, Rosewood, is out of Gainesville, on the outskirts of Gainesville. And a woman in the town of Rose, well, actually the town next to Rosewood, which is Sumner, claims that a man had beaten and raped her. And she lied and said it was a black man. And it started a whole riot in the town of Sumner, Sumner, which led to Rosewood, which was an old black town, prosperous town, where the families owned their own land. And then during this riot, there were people that were hung, murdered, and they pretty much burned the town and got rid of all of the people there. They fleed the ones that were alive. And it's interesting because it was a true story. And I had no idea that this happened until later years in life. And I actually have a friend who is a, um, whose family were residents in Rosewood. And he has actually two cousins that have received the Rosewood scholarship for family members who were, um, this place from Rosewood, which is this today. So it's a very interesting story. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't uh, aware of, of the, the tragedy there until yeah. fairly recently myself. So yeah. I haven't watched this film yet, but it's, a good film. it's like one everyone should try to make time for. Yeah, I think Thanks so. You learn a lot about South Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Moving on here to some music from you, Tawanda. This is Aretha Franklin's I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You. Yes. <laughs> I love Aretha because of her style of music. She's very soulful. And um, this, I mean, she's been doing what she's doing for a long time. And she actually was a um, civil rights activist which I don't know if a, a lot of people knew that. Um, her father was a pastor, a minister, who was um, also a friend of Martin Luther King Jr. So besides her music, she was very active, you know, in the civil rights movement. Very cool. Jennifer Hudson just did a, a movie recently about her yeah. life. Respect. Respect. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. <laughs> Good music in that too. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. Yeah, we have that on CD at our branches, believe it or not. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar, we do have a pretty extensive catalog of compact discs available with your library card too. So mm -hmm. grab that Aretha. That brings us to Kaylin, Kaylin Winkleman. She's from our Bill Glade branch and uh, this is her first time joining us on Rebouch Listen 2, and we're happy to have you today, Kaylin. Uh, tell us about your recommendations. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're starting with Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. Um, I actually, I own it. <laughs> so if that tells you anything about how much I really, really like this book, um, it's definitely a keeper for me. I also brought my other book recommendations, so you'll see that next. But Beasts of Prey drew me in. Um, a lot of it because of the cover, because I'm a sucker for a good cover. I know you're not supposed to judge a book, but I don't believe anyone that says that they don't. Um, and this one was just, it's really cool. But additionally, because of the premise, um, it's very unique. Um, I do read, this is technically, so it's a YA book. I do read a lot of YA. Um, and it's a premise that I haven't really encountered in quite a long time. So just briefly, I have some notes over here to go over. It. It's a debut fiction YA novel set in a fantasy world inspired by pan-African stories and like the mythology and different things regarding that kind of realm. And it follows two characters that travel deep into the jungle to search for a murderous monster. Um, but they both have different, two like conflicting reasons for why they need to find this monster and neither knows the other's reason, um, but they work well together. Um, I don't want to spoil too much. So <laughs> there is a good trope in here. Um, I don't know that I would call it like enemies to lovers, but we will see because she does have a second book. So if you like that kind of thing, this is a good book for that. Um, and then something else that makes it very unique in like YA, I suppose, um, right now is that every character, every name, and every aspect of it is very uniquely African. So not African-American, but African itself, which um, was super cool. And I definitely learned a lot um, just, by, just by reading and, you know, um, searching pronunciations and that kind of thing. So that was a good aspect of it. And then if you really end up liking it, I heard some good news that Netflix got the movie adaptation. Mm -hmm. And there's a second book coming, so more to come for this one. Oh, very cool. Yeah. That's then awesome. My next one. Okay. So I read this last year. Um, Girl, Woman, Other. I own this as well. Oh, I see that. Okay. I see that <laughs> my background's cutting it out. But this is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Um, I picked this up. I don't know. I think probably because it said it, that it had the Booker Prize and it was a signed copy um, just sitting at Target. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Um, not really knowing what to expect, but oh my goodness, it blew me away. It follows the lives of, and struggles of 12 different characters. Most of them are women, Black, and British, um, and follows them through several decades. And the stories intertwine in ways you don't expect. And I personally love stories like that where you don't you don't know how they're going to fit together, um, but there's alternating chapters and point of views and eventually it all comes together. 
Um, so Girl, Woman, Other is about womanhood and becoming an adult. In that process, each woman shares how she has been othered, whether on account of class, race, sexuality, and or some other dimension. Um, these stories are all about British Black women, but show how varied their experiences and their stories are, even though they share the common bond of being Black women. Um, personally, I learned a lot about feminism and um, you know, the different, how that was different for Black women um, versus other women during this time, because a, a lot of it, I would say, takes place in like the 60s and 70s. Um, and about the experiences of Black women that I personally have not fully experienced um, because I do have a certain amount of privilege myself being biracial. So I certainly learned a lot just from this book alone. That's that. Very That's cool. Sounds, sounds awesome. And you also are recommending this movie today, which this one will tug at the heartstrings. I've seen this one. Uh, tell us about your pick here, Pursuit of Happiness. Yes. So this is The Pursuit of Happiness. I promise the title's spelled right. I have been asked. It's, um, <laughs> if you've seen the movie, um, you know one of the crucial parts um, or scenes, I suppose, is when Will Smith, who plays Chris Gardner, so this is um, based on a true story, but he plays Chris Gardner and he and his son are walking by um, a mural near his daycare and he asks why happiness is spelled wrong and, you know, Will kind of gives an explanation that fits into the story, but it's supposed to be like that. So like I said, this is a biographical drama about Chris Gardner, who is a businessman and a motivational speaker. Um, played by Will Smith, and then um, also features his son, played by Jaden, and then Sandy Newton as well is in this movie. Um, so it follows Chris Gardner, who originally made a bad investment in a product that he thought would be easy to sell at the start of his marriage. Um, turns out it's pretty much useless. So as Gardner works to make ends meet, um, things turn pretty rough and his wife ends up leaving him. Um, and he loses his apartment and, you know, a lot of his livelihood. Um, and that forces him to make some tough decisions because he also has his son to care for. So that happens very, very early on. And most of the story takes place um, during a time where he takes an unpaid internship with a stockbroker, um, where he has a very small chance of getting hired on after six months if he outperforms all the other competition. Um, I gotta scroll my notes. I wrote a lot about this one. So yes, that's kind of the story. Um, I don't know. I find it difficult to watch at times, depending on, you know, the state that you're in, just because you could be reminded of situations you've experienced if you're a person of color or know the feeling of income scarcity. Um, but I do think it's important to see Black success and bring attention to accessibility issues that arise when companies only offer unpaid internships, um, which is a whole nother topic. So this is one of my top five favorite movies. And my favorite quote from the movie is, don't ever let somebody tell you, you can't do something. So that is the pursuit of happiness. Wonderful. That is a, is a powerful movie for sure. Um, and I think you have a music recommendation coming up next, which yeah. Uh, we've got Alicia Keys, her latest album, uh, Keys. Um, it's available through Freegal, which is another one of those electronic services that we have here at the library. Definitely recommend uh, looking into Freegal if you like music and you have a library card and you don't know what that is. But tell us about this album. Yeah, so um, I like this album. This, I believe, is her eighth studio album, and it's written and produced mostly by her. Um, she's described this album and the one that came last year, Alicia by Alicia Keys. So there's Alicia and then there's Keys. Um, she describes it as an introspection of herself and themes that center on identity, socio-political concerns and love. And um, I grew up listening to Alicia Keys, but um, recently I kind of started after hearing Underdog on the radio. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that song, but it's a very, I feel like it's a really motivational song. It makes me feel good. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you're just looking for something that explores identity. I feel like Alicia 
has always been very true to herself. So this just feels like a very authentic album. And I definitely recommend listening to this with Alicia so that you have Alicia and Keys because they're a good duology. So, yes. It's a good, um, she's a very good artist to follow on social media um, because she only, she explores, you know, the ideas where her music comes come from and the aspect of the create creating art right because music for me is art as well so if you ever want to you know learn about the process of making music she's a great artist to follow on social media she's one of my favorites <laughs> <laughs> i agree thank you she is pretty talented i like her on the piano for sure mm-hmm. so next uh Speaking of Maribel, who just popped in there, sharing <laughs> some knowledge and wisdom, we, we're moving on to Maribel's recommendations. And, um, you know, as I mentioned at the top, we are recognizing and celebrating Black History Month throughout February. So there are a lot of events going on in addition to today that uh, I think Maribel wanted to share in addition to her items. So take it away, Maribel. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for being in the call today. Uh, yeah, this, this month we are celebrating Black History Month. We're always very honored to be part of the celebration that is celebrated nationally. So um, we have events for everyone, um, children, teens, and adults all throughout the month. Uh, Here at the library, at the main library, we're we're starting with the uh, in-person event. Slowly but surely, we're going back to offering in-person events as well. We'll continue with the digital events um, on Zoom. Um, We have a series called Fresh Air Saturdays. Uh, Every Saturday at 10, we are inviting um, a musician or we're doing uh, arts or something related to health. Um, So we started this Saturday with African Dance and Drum. Um, It's it's really nice because it's showing you um, the basics of the dance classes, but it's also an opportunity for you to to do some movement and exercise. It was a lovely day because it was really cool. We had a nice area um, set aside so that everyone can have their own little space um, to do the, the dance instruction. So we invite everyone to please come uh, every Saturday at 10 here at the main library in the East um, parking lot. Uh, We look forward to seeing you there. And we will have a list, a complete list. If you want to visit uh, the website, we'll put it on the chat um, and it's also listed here. Um, It's, we have a a complete list of events where you can sign up for the in-person as well as the virtual events. And if we can go to the next slide. Um, I wanted to highlight this book. Um, someone mentioned earlier that you know they were attracted to the cover of the book that they recommended. Um, this happened to me as well. This book titled All That She Carried, The Journey of Ashley Sack and Black Family. Um, the reason why I was attracted to it be- If you look at the cover of the book um, on the screen there, you'll see that it has some stitching on it. Um, And this book is based on a a research study that was done by Dr. Um, Tia um, Miles. She is a professor of history. And so she does a lot of research related to family histories. And she came across in a museum, a a piece of burlap. It's a little sack um, that was in in one of the museums she was visiting. And so she wanted to know the history of that um, burlap sack. And on it was some stitching. Um, And so she started to do some research to see where that um, sack came from and the story behind it. Um, I want to read a little bit about the book, um, just a a summary of it. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to finish it, but if it's one of those books that even though it's nonfiction, you're able to follow it really closely 
Um, you may put it down and then you come back to it because you want to know, you know, what happens next or how Dr. Miles was able to discover the story of this African American family who was separated um, during slavery times. So I, um, the book summary is the following. It says in 1850, South Carolina, an enslaved woman named Rose faced a crisis, the imminent sale of her daughter, Ashley. Thinking quickly, she packed a cotton bag with a few precious items as a token of love and to, and to try to ensure Ashley's survival. Soon after, Ashley, at nine years of age, was separated from her mother. Dr. Ty, Taya Miles traces the life of a single object handed down through three generations of Black women to craft an extraordinary testament to people who are left out of the archives. Inside the burlap sap, sack was a tattered dress, handfuls of pecans and a braid of hair. And embroidered on the sack was the phrase, it will be filled with my love always. So this really captured me because, you know, nowadays we have a lot of things, right? We have, we buy a lot of objects and sometimes we don't pass it down from one family member to the next. Um, and back then, this was very important because this may have been the only item that a family member could have saved, right, to share with another family member. And in this case, it was someone who lost a daughter. Um, the daughter never saw the mother again. Um, but at least she still had that item that she took with her. And later on in the book, um, I'm not going to give too much details yet. Um, you'll see that this item was really something that joined generations and ancestors um, throughout the year, especially a fa uh, African -American, American family that was impacted in the 1800s by slavery. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about Dr. Taya Miles. She is fascinating. Um, I was able to do some research about, you know, the work that she's been doing. Um, and uh, if you have an opportunity to visit her website, I'm going to put the link on the chat um, so you can um, learn more about her. Dr. Taya Miles is Professor of History at the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Studies. She is a public and an academic historian, a creative writer who, whose work explores the intersections of African-American, Native American, and women's history. She's a renowned author and historian, and the book, All That She Carries, was named 2021's National Book Award for nonfiction. And she was also listed as the top 10 books um, of 2021. So if you have an opportunity, please check it out. I know we have a lot of copies and it's very popular. So if all the copies are checked out, make sure to request um, a copy to be um, held for you once the book becomes available. Okay, and the next uh, slide, please. Thank you. As part of Black History Month, um, I was doing some research and I saw that the Mandel Public Library last year was offering this amazing virtual reality documentary titled Traveling While Black. Um, it's, it's one of those experiences that if you've never um, used one of these devices, you know, one, you learn how to use it you know, it's something that people, it's a technology that people are using more, uh, more often now, um, you know, using the Oculus. It's a device that you wear um, on your, you put over your eyes and is uh, immerses you uh, in a 3D experience. Um, so this is very uh, moving as well uh, as the book that I recommended earlier. It's, it's, it takes you in a space where people are talking about their experiences as far as, you know, 
uh, African American in a, in a community where they need to travel from one place to the other. Something as simple as getting on a bus or even driving your own car. Um, what's happening recently with uh, the incidences um, of young men and women who have been, um, you know, killed unjustifiably so uh, in, in many cases. So this gives you an opportunity to sit down. It's almost like you're sitting down on, on a, in a diner and there are people having conversations. And as you're wearing the device, you're able to uh, just view, just you can turn to the right and view people sitting down and talking and you listen to their conversations and their experiences. If you're not able to have an opportunity to come to one of the activities that we're offering, we're offering it, as you can see on the screen at the main library, Acreage Branch, Wellington and Lantana. And each one of these, um, uh, the documentary takes place in 20 minutes. Um, so we have set aside 30 minute um, schedule so that you can see it in those 20 minutes and also learn about the device itself. Um, but if you're not able to attend one of those uh, for in one of those locations and times and days, this is a free documentary. It's available online and you can use, if you have a device at home, you can use it to view it. You download it to your device and you view it. I had an opportunity to test the, the Oculus, it's fascinating. Um, I, you know, I'm not a technology person. I, I'm not, I don't have the latest and greatest things at, at, um, technology wise at home. But once I, I was able to learn how to use it, I had uh, my coworker, uh, Michelle, teach me how to use it here at the creation station where we have computers and other technology things that you can use. Um, you know, you, you get used to it. It's a little, um, you know, you just have to adjust to seeing uh, things that are around you that are not in the room that you're in. Um, but once you get used to it, you get immersed into the story, um, the documentary in, in this case. Uh, so please, if you have an opportunity to attend, uh, the events at the locations, uh, you can sign up on our website in under the Black History Month events. Um, I, I wanted to share, uh, if I can, uh, so that you can see uh, where you can find the website and other details. Okay, one moment, I'm gonna start sharing. Okay, can you see the page? Looks good, Maribel. Okay, thank you. So right now I'm on the Black History Month page and this is where you can uh, sign up for all the Black History Month events virtually and in person. Um, I wanted to show you uh, Dr. Taya Miles website and she has amazing uh, list of her books. She has a total of seven books, six of which are nonfiction and one of them is fiction. Um, and there is an amazing interview that you can uh, watch on C-SPAN, and we'll put this uh, link on the chat for you so you can visit that. Um, you know, one of the things that I always try to find when I'm doing research or trying to read a new book is, you know, the person that's creating that work. And in this case, Dr. Tia Miles um, demonstrates how um, research and his, you know, going back and learning about um, our history, Black history, African-American history is American history. So going back and looking at those details about that family that was separated um, during, uh, due to slavery, but having a family member have the, you know, the wherewithal, the, that ability to keep that item, right? That burlap sap, um, sack, keep it and hand it down to other uh, members of the family. That to me is what makes um, 
reading, research, history, all those things uh, worthwhile. Uh, we're, we're very lucky that we have this, that opportunity to learn about uh, people that were, are no longer with us and the meaning that those items have um, behind those stories. So if you have an opportunity, please visit this, um, this link, um, C-SPAN with Dr. Miles interview. Um, and uh, once again, we invite you to attend our um, uh, Black History Month events. And this is the website. If you have an Oculus device, you can watch it. Um, in 3D, um, or if you want to experience it, uh, come to our look, our branches. Um, each one is listed um, on our website. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maribel. Lots of awesome information and resources there. And the the calendar for February is pretty pretty full. So there's more than one opportunity for everyone out there to enjoy an event related to this important month. On to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do have a few recommendations to close this out here today. Uh, the first one being the one that you can see on your screen right now. Uh, this book is called The Three Mothers, uh, How the Mothers of Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and James Baldwin Shaped the Nation. It's by Anna Malika Tubbs. Um, I really didn't know this book existed. I think I might have mentioned this to everyone that's on the call today, but I, I saw it uh, of all places on, on display in Barnes and Noble. Uh, but of course I just checked if we had it in the library and we do. Um, so, you know, with the title, it's pretty self-explanatory, uh, really gives us awesome, uh, unfortunate overlooked historical perspective of, of the mothers of these three, um, you know, world-changing uh, civil rights activists, um, Martin Luther King, Mal Malcolm X, James Baldwin. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Uh, the author herself was um, going through uh, becoming a mother as she was writing it too. So there's a lot of really neat um, stories and perspectives of that interwoven into the, into the narrative. Um, I did just want to read a very brief passage from the introduction just to kind of capture uh, what the book's about, you know, using much better words than I can use. Uh, just a wonderful writer, really. Um, here we go. Writing about Black motherhood while becoming one gave me a much deeper perspective than I had before. As my own life, my body transformed, it became even more important to me to tell Alberta's Berdice's and Louise's stories before they became mothers. Their lives did not begin with motherhood. On the contrary, long before their sons were even thoughts in their minds, each woman had her own passions, dreams, and identity. Each woman was already living an incredible life that her children would one day follow. Their identities as young black girls in Georgia, Granada, and Maryland influenced the ways in which they would approach motherhood. Their exposure to racist and sexist violence from the moment they were born would inform the lessons they taught their children. Their intellect and creativity led to fostering such qualities in their homes. The relationships they witnessed in their parents and grandparents would inspire their own approaches to marriage and child rearing. Highlighting their roles as mothers does not erase their identities as independent women. Instead, these identities inform their ability to raise independent children who would go on to inspire the world for years to come. Just a little part of the introduction. I, I highly recommend the book if you, especially if you like nonfiction and just want like a well-told story, it's very engaging. And of course, those are three hugely influential uh, people that I, I think we should all benefit, could all benefit from knowing a little bit about them too. So uh, I'll leave us with that. Uh, next, I have another book, another nonfiction. Um, I yes, I, I do like reading nonfiction, I notice when I do these things. Uh, this is a memoir from Neil Painter, who was a, is a renowned American historian, I um, believe she taught at Princeton for many years, uh, recently retired. But uh, this book uh, is a story about how at a certain point in her life, she, you know, just wanted to go to art school. 
so this is um just her story of doing that her experiences uh some some of the art that she got involved in uh it's a really really cool book that i that i enjoyed reading um and it's available not only in a physical copy but you can also find the audio and the ebook on cloud library and uh next i have some a dvd recommendation actually um if you know who nina simone is then you you most likely have watched this uh if you haven't definitely recommend it um not only watching this but familiarizing yourself with some of her music great um uh, great 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 vocalist and pianist um i think they recognize at a pretty early age that she had some special talent uh connected to the piano. Uh, Nina Simone was uh, attended Juilliard uh, for music um, at a certain point, uh, similar to Aretha Franklin, who we talked about earlier as uh, being an activist. Uh, Nina Simone also had a political awakening. She was actually one of the performers uh, that was present during the marches between uh, Selma and Montgomery. Uh, but this this movie really just covers her career as a whole and it's it's very well done. As you can see on the cover image there, there's it won tons of awards um, and was nominated for some too. And uh, closing out my recommendations is some music. Um, so for listen here, this is a, a collection of sorts that this say World Spirituality Classics One. Um, so I'm assuming there might be a volume two coming out as well, hopefully soon. This is a, a musician named Alice Coltrane who plays the harp, um, not a very common instrument, but uh, you might recognize the last name. She was married to John Coltrane, who is you know, revered as one of the greatest jazz musicians of all time. Um, Alice did play some more traditional kind of jazz sort of stuff um, as she started throughout the years, has some really cool releases with that and some awesome collaborations uh, with other um, musicians. But uh, she started going through what she describes as a, you know, more of a spiritual awakening um, uh, in the Hindu persuasion. Um, and throughout the 80s, she started self-producing what she called like devotional hymns, uh, with a lot of chanting, um, just, you know, orchestration of epic proportions, very repetitive stuff. Um, but I highly recommend this music for anyone who's interested in maybe some sort of outside of the box kind of music, but that has a really beautiful quality to it. Um, the CD itself that we have here at the library also comes with this really cool, I don't know if you can see me, this really cool book uh, attached to it that is full color and like, just awesome supplemental information, interviews with her loved ones, um, interviews with her loved ones, a little bit of insight into the production behind all of her recordings and uh, a little bit of her history and uh, her transition into uh, a more spiritual existence too. It's, it's really fascinating to read about, um, but the packaging here at the library is awesome too. Uh, we have a few copies of it and we do have a lot of the albums uh, in this later era of her career, also on Hoopla. I just want to let everyone know that too. If if you uh, don't have a CD player anymore, it's definitely an option. Uh, and I highly, highly, highly recommend Alice Coltrane. Um, otherwise, I think that's uh, my last my last words for the day. I do appreciate everybody who is on the call, uh, especially my colleagues who uh, took the time to hop on and share things they love reading, watching, and listening to. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day, uh, the rest of the month, and can make it out to some of these uh, awesome library events, whether they're virtual or in person that we're doing throughout the rest of the month. Uh, I did drop a link to a list of everything that we covered today uh, in the chat, but if you registered ahead of time, you'll also uh, get that through email from me as well. Anyone on here want to say anything before we get off? or? Yeah, Chris, if, it, if possible, I wanted to, I forgot to share how um, everyone can sign up for the, for the Oculus um, oh, documentary. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so what I can do is I can go back um, and share the screen so they can see um, how to register for that. Um, yeah, sure. it's, it's a little different because 
it takes um, 20 minutes per turn. Um, so if you see here on the on the screen for the one that we're having at the main library on Thursday, February 10th, um, begins at six, but each there's a, a time slot for each one. So if you prefer to come at six, you register for that. Or if you prefer to come later on at 637 or 730, just select the time that you prefer and then you register for that. You'll get um, a confirmation email that you registered. Um, and then you would just come um, to the information desk and we will greet you there and we'll set everything up for you at the creation station. It's the same at Lantana, um, Acreage and, uh, who else? and the Wellington branch. Um, so if you register for each location, that's easiest for you to uh, visit or nearest to you. And then um, the day of the event, you just go over to the information desk and they'll greet you and show you how to use the device. Um, I just wanted to go over it once more more time because it's one of those things that, um, you know, it's very different. I don't think we've done it before, but um, also know that we have, now we have three creation stations in the library system, one at Lantana, one at Wellington and one at Maine. And we have different technology devices that you can use. We have Apple computers. Um, you can convert videos to DVD or save it on flash drive. So if, it, if you have any, um, all videos, uh, family videos that you want to convert, you're welcome to come to any of these locations um, where we have those devices. Awesome, thanks, Mirabel. Uh, with, that, with that said, if, uh, if none of my other friends and colleagues on the call have anything that they want to add to this, I think we'll call it a day here for Read, Watch, Listen, but um, we will be back soon. Uh, we're not doing it every month like we used to, but I think the next one we'll be doing will be in June. So uh, stay tuned for that. And we hope to see you around the library. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.